actually have two brains here, all right? And because we're gonna dissect them both in different ways and how you dissect it will depend upon how your instructor tells you to do it. But again, like all anatomy, we have to orient ourselves. So this is the inferior surface of the brain here. This is the superior surface. And I have them faced so that the anterior is on this side. Sometimes with the brain, we use the word rostral, which means towards the nose. And down here is the posterior portion. So I'm gonna start with this one right here because we're looking at the superior surface. This is what you would see directly underneath the top of your skull. And you can see that there is this glistening surface to it. So the dura mater has been removed. That's the outer covering of the meninges. But you'll see there's sort of a glistening surface. And if I stick my probe inside one of these, I might be able to pull it up a little bit so you can see it. Maybe. All right. But that glistening surface that's there is called the arachnoid. It's like saran wrap. And you'll see inside that, you'll see these little vessels. So all these little brown things in here are blood vessels. Most likely, most of them are going to be arteries. All right. And those blood vessels are sitting in narrow parts. There, we can see a little bit of that arachnoid. So the outer layer is the arachnoid. It's called the arachnoid. It might remind you of something else. If it reminds you of a spider, that's why it's called the arachnoid. Because if you pull this up, sometimes you can see the little spider-like projections that go from that arachnoid down to the layer, which is the surface of the brain, called the pia the pia mater. So if we do our meninges again, which are the coverings of the brain, the outer is the dura mater. Dura for durable, right? Dura means tough. Mater means mother. We don't have that. It's been removed already. The glistening layer here is the arachnoid layer, and it will have some spider-like projections that go down into the layer on the surface of the brain. Right here, we can see it where it's not so glistening, the pia mater. Pia means soft. If you play piano, you might have realized that. All right, so if we look at the brain, it has hills, which are called gyri. The singular is gyrus. And they have valleys, which are called sulci. The singular is sulcus. And again, here we can see the blood vessels in the, in the sulci right there. All right, so most of the brain right here is the cerebrum. Back here, the hindbrain, part of the hindbrain is the cerebellum. And here we have a little bit of the spinal cord. So this is the superior surface. We have a fissure right here, fissure for a big crack. This is called the medial longitudinal fissure. We also have another fissure that we sometimes can see down here, which is a lateral fissure, or I call it the sylvian sulcus. Right. We're gonna leave that one right there. We're gonna come to this one all right, we're gonna flip it upside down. And this is the inferior surface. All right, and the inferior surface, we might be able to see the pituitary gland here. It looks like he's sitting right here. So here's the pituitary gland. Let's flip this one over too and see if we can find it on this one. It looks like he might be a little bit right here. Sometimes the pituitary gland gets pulled out with the dura. But we also can see, this again is anterior, that we'll start seeing some cranial nerves. So this is the olfactory tract. Olfactory cranial nerves actually uh, are in the cruciform plate, but this is part of the olfactory tract going back. This right here is a little bit of the optic nerves, all right, which are going into the optic tract, and where they cross is the optic chiasm. Cranial nerve three, well, this might be a little bit of cranial nerve three right here, this little wisp. All right, cranial nerve four actually comes around from behind. Five, I don't even know if I can see the rest. Five is usually pretty big and sits about right here. This is probably seven and eight. And then nine, 10, 11, 12 are gonna sit down here in the brainstem. Oh, actually we do have a little bit of the dura. Oh, this helps us, look what I found. Okay, so this is a little bit of the residual dura. And again, the pituitary gland was right here at the base. And if I pull this up, I'm going to pull the pituitary because he actually sits in between the two portions of the dura. So there's the dura mater. And if you can look, he's very, 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 very tough. So that was the outer meninges. Outer meninges is the dura mater. The clear glistening is the arachnoid. And the surface of the brain is the pia mater. All right, so there goes the pituitary gland. Ooh, there's cranial nerve too. This is probably number five, because he's big. 
All right, I'm gonna pull them out there. All right, pituitary gland sitting right there. All right, so here again, we're on the posterior, excuse me, we're on the inferior surface. This would be your temporal lobes here. All right, so if we turn this laterally on this one, here's your temporal lobe. They sort of remind me of the earmuffs of the brain. Again, this is anterior, so this would be the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe, and way back here, the occipital lobe. In, in us, we would have a central sulcus, which is going to be harder to find on a sheep. So the sulci aren't as well defined. This may be one right here. So this may be the central sulcus. It goes all the way straight up. So if you remember, all right, and let's orient ourselves again. This is anterior, this is posterior. Central sulcus goes all the way towards the medial longitudinal fissure, but does not quite get into it. So if this were the central sulcus, some of this right here should be the premotor cortex, and some of this should be the post-sensory cortex. Premotor gyrus, that is, and post-sensory gyrus. All right. Okay, so let's um, stop that for us. We're going to stop that for a second. And, all right, so let's orient ourselves for, again. So this is the anterior portion, this, uh, and this is the posterior portion. We're looking at the superior surface. All right, no one should normally not point with the knife like I just did, but we're going to do uh, coronal cuts right now. So coronal cuts, remember, will give you an anterior and a posterior. And when we do these, we're going to lay them down so that we know what we cut. All right, so we're going to make each one maybe close to uh, 10 millimeters or so in size. So we're going to slice them out just straight down. So if you were getting an MRI of a brain and someone did coronal cuts, they would look like this. Oh, that's why I've left my dura on this one too. Uh, I take that dura off. All right, and I'm gonna cut through this last part of cut that brain stem off. All right. So right now I've got mostly the cerebral hemispheres. All right, and I'm gonna turn this again. This is anterior, this is posterior, and I'm gonna lay them out. So we can take a look at what happens as we go from anterior to posterior. All right. I'll grab my probe here so I can point with a probe. All right. We might be able to see the difference between gray and white matter. So if we look, it sort of looks a little grayer on the outside. Now it looks a little whiter on the inside. All right. And that's how they got their name, gray matter and white matter. Gray matter is unmyelinated structures. And so the biggest unmyelinated structure is the cell body. So cell bodies or any neurons that are unmyelinated may be in the gray matter. The white matter is myelinated tracts. So these are mostly axons that are traveling. And if we look through here, we can see that there's a big white matter tract that connects the two hemispheres. And so we named it that, the corpus for body callosum, the colossal big tract, the corpus callosum. We can come down here, let's see what we can see down here. Ooh. Look, now we have some spaces in here. So we got a couple of spaces right here. So these are our ventricles. The word ventricle means little belly. So we would have a lateral ventricle here and another lateral ventricle here. By, by tradition, the right lateral ventricle is called ventricle number one and the left one is ventricle number two. And we have a structure here that's coming into it. And I have to look at this next one here. This looks like this is probably the caudate nucleus. We're going to come down here to this next structure, all right, and here's our ventricles again, and right here is this big structure, all right. This big structure's name means inner chamber. This is the thalamus. So again, you can see some of the ventricle here and some of it here. This big structure is the thalamus, 
and you actually can see this little structure right here, which is the third ventricle. So the two lateral ventricles would drain into the third ventricle. We come on further and we've actually cut down, here's a, a structure that's called the cerebral aqueduct. So the third ventricle up here is now draining into the cerebral aqueduct. And here we got our midbrain. So this now we're starting into the brain, st brain, brain stem. And the first portion is the midbrain. Back here we still have a little bit of the occipital lobe. So these are axial cuts. The important thing again is to notice the difference between white matter and gray matter. To notice that there's a big corpus callosum connecting the two. That there's some matters that are gray matters. That this right here looks like the caudate nucleus. This belongs to the basal ganglia. All right, and we come down even further, we can get the big thalamus, all right? And the ventricles usually sit underneath that corpus callosum, and we can follow those on down. They, those lateral ventricles drain into the third, which drains into the cerebral aqueduct, which drains into the fourth. All right, so we're gonna push those over to the side here, and we're gonna take what we still have left over here. So here, still is the uh, inferior portion of the brainstem. And again, we might be able to find that cerebral aqueduct. There he is, right there. All right, so that cerebral aqueduct is going to drain into the fourth ventricle. And the fourth ventricle is going to sit in that space right here. So if we look at it from the top there, you can see it. Down in there is our fourth ventricle. And actually we can see some of that spider web-like structures that is actually part of the arachnoid, the spider web of the arachnoids. So there is the fourth ventricle. We might be able to see the pineal gland. It looks like we have a little portion of the pineal gland right here. And we'll try and find that in another. So this is a good way to see the fourth ventricle. All right, the pons is the middle structure of the midbrain. I always think of it as looking kind of pregnant, so I put my peas together, pregnant pons. All right, here was the midbrain, here is the pons, here is the medulla oblongata. And come down here again. The fourth ventricle would sit, the, the pons would sit anterior to the fourth ventricle, and the cerebellum sits posterior to it. Okay. All right, we're going to take these aside now, and we're going to take this other section, and we're going to cut him in a mid sagittal cut. All right, so to re review again, orienting ourselves is so important. This is anterior, this is posterior. Here's the brain stem. This little part right here, maybe the spinal cord. All right, and this is the cerebellum here. So we're gonna take a mid sagittal cut right down the middle. Remember, sagittal cuts give you a right and left side. So I'm gonna cut straight down the middle. I'm flip it around so I can cut away. From my fingers. There you can see some arachnoid again. Always cut away from your fingers. All right, put the knife down and now we have mid sagittal cut here. All right, so if we orient ourselves again, anterior, posterior, here is our cerebellum. All right, now we get another view of the corpus callosum. Here's the corpus callosum right here. All right, underneath the corpus callosum is the ventricle and I just po poke through a part called the septum pellucidum so that you could see into the ventricle. So there's a ventricle right there. The floor of the ventricle is the thalamus sitting right there. Here's a view of the pineal gland. There's a pineal gland. This would be the midbrain. This would be the pons. This would be the medulla. All right, our fourth ventricle would have been sitting right in here in that space. All right, so let's go over this one more time. Anterior, posterior, corpus callosum, lateral ventricle, and this being my left hemisphere, this would be the left lateral ventricle or ventricle number two. The thalamus makes up most of the floor of the ventricle. All right, midbrain here, pineal gland. Think about what the pineal gland does. All right, pons right here. All right, fourth ventricle right there, medulla oblongata. If we look, I'm gonna pull and look this other side. So now we're looking at the right side. Now anterior is over here and posterior is over here. Okay, we have another view of the pineal gland right there. All right, but what's interesting here is here's the cerebellum. And you can see this tree-like structure. So this tree-like structure 
of white matter you can see coming out, that's called the arbor vitae. Arbor vitae means tree of life. And it's just connections of white matter in the cerebellum, but it tells you you're in the cerebellum. So again, this is a saddle cut. Our other one was a, a coronal cut. You also could do an axial cut, but these are the two most informative cuts. So now that we're done, please review all your structures, uh, then carefully bag everything up, uh, wash your tools and let them air dry, and we'll be back for the next dissection.